Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome. Move that down a little bit there. Welcome, welcome. My name is Alex, and welcome to class. If you haven't been in one of my previous classes, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, and the Ucha Creek, now the Grovetown Library, since it has moved to Grovetown. Yay, with the new building and everything. So, welcome to class. Very glad that you're here today. If you're watching this on replay, do you realize if you come for some of our live classes, that means you can post questions into the chat and everything. So as everybody kind of comes into our class, this is one of our fun classes. We're going to be learning together. So this is kind of a class that I came up with. We were doing a lot of stuff with our Raspberry Pi, some stuff that we had done many classes before, and we were looking for some new projects. So I got a big project box. Ooh, big project box. With our big project box came with some new projects that I haven't done before. And so we've been kind of working on each one a little bit. We did some last week and of course last month as well. And today is a project called Doorbell where it's kind of a controlling a buzzer with a uh, pressing the button. Last time we did made a breathing LED light. Mm, we actually hooked it up so we had two of them. So as you come to the classroom, definitely feel free to kind of post any questions that you have into the chat and want to know how can I help okay what questions do you have how can I help now I will be posting um, my usual handout um, for the uh, the Razor Pi introduction to Razor Pi and physical computing class and I'm very excited to say we've got some really cool Halloween stuff um, so we'll be talking a lot about some of our Halloween classes this month include some Raspberry Pi stuff, some Scratch stuff, some Python, and also we'll be doing a Unity class too. So some new classes coming up about programming and I also thought it being Halloween we could do some Halloween themed stuff, okay? So the big question is how can I help? So welcome to class. Very glad you're here today. Like I said, I'll be posting the beginner handout that I used with that class as well. So last week, we actually did a photography and printing and virtual scrapbooking class. Last Wednesday, we did cutting the cable and basics of cord cutting and creating videos and editing basics. And this is our new schedule for October. Let me disappear here. So our new schedule for October is October 1st, we did library resources and apps class. And we have a new app to use, which is our Libby. So we're going to be doing a, a whole class mostly focused on Libby, but also other library resources as well on the 14th. So come join me for that. So today is the 6th. So we're doing our Razor Pi projects live with Alex, with the doorbell. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll be doing email 101 personal business basics. And on the Harlem website, 11 o'clock, we'll be doing the Google Suite. Okay. So if you wanted to learn how to use the online suite, there is a, it is free. Um, if you do want more space, it does cost, but I just use the free version for my stuff uploading and stuff. Uh, it's similar to like having an online office and everything. So we'll be talking about that. And then on Wednesday, we're gonna, uh, today's Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday, and the next day is Thursday, and that's how that works. All right, so in Grovetown on Thursday at 8 o'clock, we'll be doing Google School. So that kind of connects with our Google Suite, we're doing Google School. And on the 8th, we'll be doing Let's uh, Build a Website with WordPress. Oh, welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're feeling better. I hope so. Okay, so let's build a website, and then next week we'll be on the 14th, we'll be talking about, let's talk about Libby, our new digital library, and then we'll be doing introduction to Google Cardboard and um, VR. We won't be having a class on Tuesday. So on the 14th, we're going to be doing Google Scratch Basics, let's make a fun Halloween card, and the other part about that is Dance Party, okay, with using Scratch. And then on the 22nd, uh, excuse me, on the 15th, which is the Thursday, we'll be doing an app swap. So I'll be talking about a lot of apps that are really great resources 
Um, the ones that are, I'll think most of the ones that we'll talk about will be free, of course, that we can use with our our, um, our iPhones, and I'll talk about Android stuff as well. Just lots of really great apps that people may or may not know about. Stargazing, a lot of stuff like that. And uh, you can come in and talk about what apps you like as well and post that into the chat. And we'll just kind of kind of share different kind of apps that we like, okay? Makes our life a little bit easier. And then we'll be dig doing digital couponing. And then Scratch Basics, Let's Make a Spooky Card and Dance Party on the 21st. And also we'll be doing a Gadget Help on Zoom with me. <laughs> That'll be a one-on-one -on -one class. So basically I need you to um, call into the library and sign up for that uh, to be able to schedule a time, okay? And then we'll be doing a Python coding, scratch, spot the dif difference kind of prank stuff, and that's going to be Python coding. And then be using Unity to make a robot game at the end. And then, <laughs> I know this is it's a lot of information, I know that. And how to make a sound trap. So we're going to kind of turn our Raspberry Pi whoopee cushions into a sound trap. Someone can step on the mat in the front door and it'll play different spooky sounds, okay? And then on the 29th, where we're going to do in Scratch Basics, let's make a spooky game. So we got a lot of fun stuff coming up this month. Here's a little side note. Uh, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. You can, uh, curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also, you can contact us through the Facebook app as well. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're basically having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, that means we'll get our own personal YouTube address. If you're looking for our YouTube channel, just go to YouTube for right now for and search for GCHRL uh, videos, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started. And I'll come back here. Okay, so if you've been in one of my Raspberry Pi classes before, we actually cover a lot with our Raspberry Pi, talking about our, um, excuse me, our GPIO pins. And there's many projects that we do and I'm actually going to go ahead and post our handout I'm going to post the handout into our chat Let me load that up And this kind of encompasses our, our beginner class with Raspberry Pi. And that's the handout for it. Okay. All right. So one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to do our doorbell. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the other microphone. No, excuse me. Other camera here. So I'll disappear. Yay. There we go. And now you can see that. All right. So we have our Raspberry Pi here. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll plug it in and then we'll connect to it. <laughs> kind of prefer it to be turned a little bit like that. You can see kind of the down part, our USB. We'll give that a second. I should be able to log in with that, no problems.
All right, so while I'm wait, waiting that um, waiting for that to load, go ahead and open up a post there. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to load. Okay, there we go. So there's our Raspberry Pi. It's all set up virtually. And what is this? This is actually, and I also have our handout as well. And like I said, this is this is what we use for our virtual class. Okay, thing, go away. Well, all right, let's, how do I do that? Hold on. <laughs> well, what the, what's the deal? I had a. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> mm. Okay, so there's our VLC, VNC is actually what we're using to connect. And let's talk about our Raspberry Pi handout a little bit here. So basically, just kind of go over to it in case you haven't done it before. It kind of talks about the, the different topics we, we cover. So if you did get a new Raspberry Pi, um, also if you've got the different components with the LED and stuff, this basically sets you up to set do some LED projects and also it talks about the GPIO pins, okay? So kind of getting that ready, getting it set, using the uh, breadboards and everything. And it also explains how to use the GPIO pins a little bit, which is a nice little chart that we have here. Talking about our outputs, our LED, creating a switch, how our breadboard works, how switches work, and connecting up our first LED and everything. Okay, and then it's got a um, push button time game. So our project today is we're actually going to be doing a doorbell project. Okay, now this is. Let me tell you about what we have. So the box that I purchased uh, it's from free Novi and it's the free Novi RFID starter kit okay for our Raspberry Pi of course and then it has the free instructions on setting that up and everything okay which is all on it's all on their website so let me go ahead and I guess let's go over our part our let's read over what we're going to learn today yeah, I'm back. Let me disappear. There we go. <laughs> Read over what we learned today, and then we'll start putting our, our pieces together and everything, our components, and then we'll work on our doorbell project. Okay. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to read along. It says, we will make a doorbell with this functionality. When you push the bu button switch, it's pressed, the buzzer sounds, and when the buzz button is released, the buzzer stops. This is a momentary switch function. And like I said, with that box, all the things come in here. And I'm a little new to the type of buzzer we're going to be using today and transistor we're using today. So that's actually pretty exciting for me because we do have some new stuff going on as well. So first we have our Raspberry Pi. Okay. We're going to be using our GPIO pins. Okay. Now with their example, they're actually going to be using the extension board with the ribbon cable. I'm just going to be connecting it directly to... Um, uh, the GPIO pins, if I need to plug the other one in, I will, um, but just, just kind of let you know there's different ways of doing that. So let's go ahead and let's talk about we're also going to need a jumper wire, MPN transistor, okay, an active buzzer, push button switch, a resistor, that's 1K, 
and resistor that's 10k. Let's talk about learning. Okay, so a buzzer is an audio component. Now I actually have uh, two of those. I have the active buzzer and the inactive buzzer. And give me one second. I think I've left it in the other room. Okay, so we have our buzzer, and let's talk about the difference, okay? So an active buzzer is an audio component. They are widely used in electronic devices such as calculators, electronic alarm clocks, automobile fault indicators. They're both active and passive types of buzzers. Active buzzers have oscillator inside. These will sound as long as power is supplied. Passive buzzers require an an external oscillator signal generally using PWM with different frequencies to make a sound. Now we used PWM last time to make our LED breathe. So here's our active buzzer and then here's our passive buzzer. Active buzzers are component and it shows a, a picture of it. And let me turn the um, camera back on. So let's look at what we have. This actually came with the same kit. For other projects, we're gonna do LED stuff. And this is also the GPIO connection thing that it was talking about. So here's our two buzzers, okay? So we have two. How can we tell the difference, okay? Hold on, there we go. Active buzzers are easier to use. Generally, they only make a different sound frequency. Passive butter buzzers require an external circuit to make sound, but passive buzzers can be controlled to make sounds of various frequencies. The resonant, um, resonant, resoundant, the resoundant frequency of the passive buzzer in this kit is two kilohertz, which means the passive buzzer is the loudest when it is resoundant frequency at two kilohertz. Okay. How to identify active and passive buzzers. As a rule, there is a label on an active buzzer covering the hole where sound is um, emitted, excuse me. <laughs> but there are exceptions to this rule. Active buzzers are more complex than passive buzzers in their manufacture. There are many circuits and crystal oscillator elements inside active buzzers. All of this is usually protected with a waterproof coating and a housing, exposing only its pins from the underside. On the other hand, passive buzzers do not have protective coatings on their underside from the pinholes. View of the passive buzzer, you can see the circuit board, coils, and permanent magnet, all or any component, uh, com combination of these components depending on the model okay so let's go ahead and let's look at our camera so we have our two buzzers here okay excuse me so basically it's saying it's the under part of it okay Oop. just came undone Did that just break? Huh, or does that just hook in there? Well, we'll have to see. I'm not even sure if this is the one I'm supposed to use, but apparently the bomb just became detached. So was that a break or does that just come undone? Hmm. 
Looks like there's a little bit of glue here at the top. Okay, so that must just be something that, okay. So if I do add a little glue to that, it should keep it there. And I'm not sure if that's the one we need to be using today. So, yeah, it looks like there's just a little bit of glue there. Hmm. Okay, so let me set that one there. Okay, so I think that's not actually the one we're supposed to be using today. So we're actually going to be using, let's see, transistor is required to project, uh, protect, okay, so which, which are we using? Let me make sure here. We're back to our beginning. We're going to be using the active buzzer. And the active buzzer Okay, so the one I think is broken is actually the passive one, but it looks like I could glue that back together, okay? Looks like uh, it just was on there with a little bit of glue, but luckily that's not the one we're supposed to be doing today. So this is actually our active buzzers, what we want to use. Active buzzers are more complex than passive buzzers in their manufacture. There are many circuits and crystal oscillator elements inside the active buzzers. Now, I believe a minute ago we talked about Basically, it's kind of like an on. It says remove af seal after washing. Okay, so there's our active buzzer. Now let's get our transistors. Transistor is required in this project due to the buzzer's current being so great that GPIO or RPG's output capability cannot meet the power requirements necessary for operation. A MP NPN transistor is needed here to amplify the current. Okay. Transistors, full name. Let me get turn the screen off there. Transistors, full name, semiconductor transistor is a semiconductor device that controls current. Think of a transistor as an electronic amplifying or switching device. Transistors can be used to amplify weak signals or to work as a switch. Transistors have three electrodes, pins, base, connection, emitter. When there are current passing between B, then CE will have a several fold current increase transistor modification. In this configuration, the transistor acts as an amplifier when current produced by B exceeds a certain value, CE will limit the current output and this point of the transistor is working in its sanitation, sanitary, I'm not sure, region and acts like a switch. Transistors are available as two types as shown below, PNP and NPN. Okay, so I need to make sure our, in our kit, the PNP transistor is marked as 8550 and NPN transistor is marked as 8050. So we need to make sure that we have the 80501. Okay. So let's go to our little books. Oh, it's actually in a little bag here. Not in that one. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. So we want the eight oh five O is what we want. Triple check in there. Yep. 8050 and it should have the letter N on it. Okay. Okay.
goodness gracious, that is small. That is very small to read. Let's see. Well, I might need a magnifying glass to look at that. <laughs> okay. I know what to do. I actually have a, um, a saved picture of all of the components. <laughs> and we want the 8050 with the N on it. Actually hard to see. Let me look at the other ones to make sure here. <laughs> that was like super small. Okay, so it says we have six of one kind and two of another. second let's see if I got a magnifying glass because that is super small that's funny to have something they all look the same Sorry about that. I've got a pair of 
glasses repair kit here. And we need the 8050. Okay, 8550. Five five oh eight five five oh five five oh eight five five oh Eight oh five oh. There we go. Okay, so now we're good to go. <laughs> it's kind of funny because usually I have, if I'm working on a project, I have music or something. But I guess you can play your own music while you listen to me. Okay, so we've got our two parts here. We can set that over there. Now what we need, let's go along with our handout. Thanks to the transistor's characteristics, they're often used as switches in digital circuits. Okay, here I'll close the. Thanks to the transistor's uh, characteristics, they are often used as switches in digital circuits. Make it a little bit bigger for y'all. There we go. Is that a little better? No, it's too big. There we go. As microcontrollers output current capacity is very weak, we will use a transistor to amplify its current in order to drive components requiring higher current. When we use a N NPN transistor to drive a buzzer, we often use the following method. If GPIO outputs high level current will flow through R1 resistor 1. The transistor conductors current and the buzzer will make sounds. If GPIO output level is low, no current will flow through R1. The transistor will not conduct current and buzzer will remain silent, no sounds. When we use a PNP transistor to drive a buzzer, we often use the following method. If GPIO outputs low level current will flow through R1, the transistor conducts current and the buzzer will make sounds. If GPIO output outputs high level, no current flows through R1, the transistor will not conduct a current and the buzzer will remain silent, no sound. And I thought that was the same thing. Uh, below are the current schematics, the circuit schematics for both the NPN and PNP transistor to power a buzzer. And we're doing the NPM. Okay. That's helpful for schematic, but we want to see how to hook it up. Okay. All right. So basically, they have it hooked up to, let's see, GPIO pin uh, 17. And it is getting current from both. Okay. And then ground, hardware connection. If you need any support, feel free. Okay, maybe I should do the um, the setup like they have, and maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to follow. Yeah, GPIO 17. Okay, so I'm actually going to Right, so you're going to remove all our components from our nice breadboard here. This actually gives power to the breadboard, okay, on and off. That's another project we might do. I have to go get tweezers. I'll go get tweezers. 
Well, so you just want to make sure that none of these are damaged. I think that they even said that's why they ship them already connected to the breadboard. Oh, there we go. Oh, I actually bent it pulling it out. Okay, I think I'm going to go grab the tweezers because I don't want to bend anything. Oh, it bent a little bit. Oosh. So it's been like very easy. That's even more easy than the other part. Sheesh. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers. After this, I might actually plug all that back in again. It might actually be a good idea. And this one is an interesting one. It's LED, but you can actually set it up so what they call is um, waterfall effect. Which look pretty fine. It's like a fun project. Come on, very gently. All right. We'll actually use this breadboard. And we can grab the ribbon. And this looks like an old computer ribbon. It actually is. <laughs> you can see all that. It's just a different way of keeping track. Okay, so Well, which way does it go on the board then? Hmm. That I actually don't know. Okay, so we've got that. How does that ribbon actually connect? All right, we're at 105. I may actually have to jump up to the beginning of our document because I need to know how to hook this up. This company makes a whole bunch of different little projects for the Raspberry Pi robots. I'm going to kind of skim through here real quick. We should see a diagram. That's what I'm just looking for real quick. about going fast. I'll see it real quick and I'll stop. <laughs> so my installing the software, setting up the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Does it show how to, yes, I understand all that, but how, which way do I hook the ribbon to this thing that you have sent me? If not, I'll go back to the way I know. Okay, perfect. So it goes like that. Okay. 
Very good. Okay, now, get that out of the way. We're at 105, I believe. Okay, so let's set our buzzers and everything up. And we need to go make sure we have the right resistors. Okay, so resistors. And I actually have a card that came with my little kit. It tells us how to tell what the resistors are. It's not the easiest thing to tell, I will tell you that. Okay, so the brand new ones will be easy to spot. Okay, there's the two. Here's 1K. Ideally, it would be easy. I know we still have this chart, but ideally, it would be easier to keep them together. So I don't have to keep looking at the colors and comparing them and all that. Okay, so, and here's our 10K, and here's the 1K. So, put that back in the bag. If you look at our, so it says 1K, there's ribbon, let's see, oh, it's so still hard to tell, okay, ribbon, three, there's red, and then the other red, I know that's what it is, I'm just, I'm just comparing here, and there's the 10, All right, so, and then we've got our switch. I think they have the little, they're showing the little small switches, which is what I have. So we'll do the little, little itty bitty switch. Of course I could use one of the big ones, but we'll go along with what they have there. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's hook it up just like this. So, first we need our buzzer. And it does show a positive side. Can you see that right there? It's showing positive. I will tell you this, I don't see on the actual component, but it does have long leg, short leg. So that may be our other indicator, just like when we set up our LEDs, our LEDs with our first project, the making the LED blink. Okay, long leg, short leg. So we do have a long leg, short leg. All right, and that looks like right about, about here. They've got pause and let me plus positive on the right. So that's what we'll do. Be very gentle. Because I only have one of those. Okay, now we need mail to mail. Maybe I'll hook that one up last. That's a good idea. Let's go and hook up the rest, and then we'll hook that one up. Okay. Now this in this circuit, the power supply, the buzzer is five volts, and the pull-up 
pull up resistor, the push button switch is connected to the 3.3 power feed. Actually, the buzzer can work when connected to the 3.3 power feed, but this will produce a weaker sound from the buzzer. Not very loud, it says. Okay. Now, does this have a positive and negative? Because it's not showing me that. Interesting. Okay. So... Try to get it to spread out a little bit here. Be very diff um, gentle with it. Doesn't have to go that far. Okay, there we go. All right, so put it on the rail, so that would be GPIO 17, and then the power one, and then that's going to the ground. Okay, GPIO 18. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put our resistors down, and Oh, it's interesting because it's almost like they expect me to have a little chart, which they do because they gave it to me. So, okay, that one and that one are the same. Okay, and of course, this one is off by itself. So that must be my, all right, let's go back and do a triple check here. Okay, so the two, the 10Ks, two 10Ks must go here. So let's go ahead and do that. There, and they have it as going three over, so it just must be on the end. Don't have it on the same row as that. We don't have it on the same row. Looks like I need to move these guys down a little bit. So I'm gonna move horizontal. Sorry, that keeps sliding that way. <laughs> it wants to, to go that way. If I had like a little rubber band or clamp, keep it right there. Okay. Or I said the other breadboard right there, and that'll kind of stop it. Okay. So we got that one. Let's put our buzzer in going across the river. Like a river. Okay, so the point of this is, and let's see. With the bigger button, it's not as connection. Okay, so that's on the same row, same row. Okay, now let's get our 1K. So that's our 10Ks. They're going this way. And just a reminder, I'm going to set my 1K going that way. And then the 1K looks like it's the middle. And it goes across. Okay, so the middle, middle. Goes across and then just bends. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't matter because it just says one finger plugged in. 
I'll move it this way a little bit more. All right. So now Okay, now let's work on our wires. So let's do our connections first. It's a big long one, so uh, trying to think if I could match. Could I match their color scheme? I think I could actually, because I do have the other colors. Okay, I'm gonna try to do that. I will try. Of course, this one is pretty short. Okay, so we'll try that. <laughs> All right, so this is GPIO 17. GPIO 17. To B1K. yellow and let's see if I got black yep got a black black and do I have green yeah I got green too so I should do this okay so there now remember our first attempt is fail okay and we are actually going to go down to the rail because that's to ground everything so this is going to the ground rail that's to ground it all right now do we have the green let's do green it's kind of neat to get it the same uh, color, I think. Here's a short one. Short one that's green. <laughs> Come on. All right. So, go from our buzzer the row and it's going to go to the third leg right there okay and let's see if we got a blue oh I do have a blue a big long blue too that'll work great I don't know if this is supposed to be but I guess so okay we're going to hand hook it to power last I think is what we're going to do even though it said it can do a little bit of power. Let's get the other blue here. Come on out of there. And yes, I have a nice thing of Velcro right here. I might hook these things back up with when we're done. Okay, so GPIO 18. GPIO 18, that's going to go to the same row as our NK resistor. Beep, 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 beep. Of course, the button's in the middle now, isn't it? <laughs> Make sure I'm not touching anything. Okay, so I need a red one. Get a short red one. Aha! A short red one. Let's put them here. From three volts. Okay, well, let's hold off on that. I want to hook up to the power last after we do our coding. Okay, if I got a short black. Mm. Yeah, it's not too long. All right, short black, ground. All right, this 
be our ground connection to our rail. Okay. And we want to ground our button. And that's what this one's going to do. And that will be on the same rail as our button. And ground it. Okay. Oh. Guess we lost the memory part on that one. Hmm. Okay. It's still good. I can put some tape on it. Don't worry about it right now. Okay. Now we're going to hook up the power last. So let's go ahead and let's work on our code. In this project, a buzzer will be completed controlled by a push button switch. When the button switch is pressed, the buzzer sounds, and when the buzzer is released, the buzzer stops. It is analog, analogous. In a ligish, I think I'm saying that wrong, to our earlier project that controlled an LED on and off. Anal I guess it's analog is what it's trying to say. So let's skip our code. Let's do our Python code. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up on our computer. And this is project 61 doorbell and has two parts. Why is it two parts? Okay. All right, let's read over it. After the program is executed, press the button switch and the buzzer will sound. Release the button switch and the buzzer will stop. Okay, hopefully so. So here's our full program. And this actually goes by telling us um, what everything is. Let me, let me turn our camera off because I don't want it to block while you're trying to read. Buzzer pin 11, buzzer pin 12 has been defined. Let's see, import GPIO as GPIO. Let me see, set mode. This is about the button, so it'll match um, what's uh, on our, uh, the, the key. <laughs> I'll call that the key, like it's a map. Let me see, output, pull up, input mode, loop while true. GPIO low if button is pressed, turn on buzzer if it's high, if button is released, turn off buzzer, buzzer turn off, okay? And this is about cleanup and the program starting over and of course interrupting it with our code. This code is exactly the same as when we used a push button LED. You can also try using the PNP transistor to achieve the same results, okay? so. Uh, when we use passive buzzer to make an alarm. Okay, so the next project kind of goes into this when they're talking about an alarm. Okay, so let's go ahead and now that we have our Python and let me pull that code up and notepad plus plus. <laughs> Is our breathing from last time. And here is our code. Okay, so on the Raspberry Pi, now we're going to go to, and I'm using VNC, which is very, makes it very easy to, as you can see, use over a Wi Fi network, control the Raspberry Pi. And it's loading. And there's our code from even last time. I'm going to close everything. Everything should be saved and click new. And let's go right ahead and let's just get the, uh, basically make the code uh, match. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Import. dot g p i o as g p i o and of course remember first attempt is fail okay first attempt in learning is fail 
uh, as long as I tell students that a lot and the big thing about that is just realize that your first time doing this it's probably the code's not gonna be right you don't have the wires hooked up properly or just something like that's gonna be happening so don't don't kick yourself too hard because it's gonna be okay okay it's import RPI GPIO as GPIO let's say whoop gotta make sure all the capitalization matches buzz pin equals 11 and it says that's to find the the um, I've forgotten the term in Python but that's the variable thank you that's to define the variable as a buzzer pin so we have let's see on our schematic where it's 11 and 12 okay all right so button pin 12 and as we learned last time when we do this here where it says GPIO board that actually is a set number on the board let me pull that up see if I can pull that up It was where it said GPIO pin numbering. Yeah, so when it says, let me copy, I need to copy that into the document and then I can show y'all. Give me one second. Put that at the bottom. And what we found out last time was when it actually uses that term, it actually sets the board as having numbers because it's 40 pins on here. Okay. So instead of it saying GPIO 17, which is what we're connected to, it actually means pin 11. And GPIO 18 means pin 12. Okay. By using the, where is it on here? Hold on. Anyway, by using the, what we're about to do with the GPIO board, okay, the physical numbering. Is that confusing? I believe it's confusing because our other class, we don't have to do that. But it's the way they have set up their handout because they think it's, it's easier. But anyway, GPIO set mode GPIO BORD GPIO set whoop set up GP buzzer pin comma GPIO out let's see GPIO oh, where are they buzzer GPIO out GPIO buzzer pin GPIO out 
Let's see, set buzzer pin to output. So this is GPIO dot set up button pin comma GPIO in pull underscore up pull up underscore down equals G P I O P U D underscore U P. So that's about, ugh, if I can remember everything that we learned. Um, anyway, that's the component that's going to boost. Of course, I'm pointing at it. And I don't have the camera on, do I? <laughs> that's funny. Um, so that component's going to boost the power. Okay. Pull up, down equals GPIO, PUD up, and it says something to the fact, whoop, I want to do that. Turn the pull up next input, oh, okay. Huh. Oh, okay, give it more power, I guess. Okay, so no on the wrong part. Okay, let's do backspace to get us back to where we were. Def loop open parentheses, close parentheses. We get our while true, which is our loop, so it doesn't just do it once. So if GPIO, whoop, need a period there, input open parentheses, GPIO input open parentheses button, pin close parentheses, so we need these double equals. Nope. GPIO dot low. Low, 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 low. Okay. GPIO out put oh, parentheses buzz pin comma GPIO GH high close parentheses so that would turn on the buzzer and it's going to say something on the screen buzzer turned on okay cool so print put something on the screen Buzzer turned on. Huh. No, this based it, yeah. Close parentheses. Print buzzer turned on. I didn't put a space there. I'm not sure if I have to or not, but I'm going to just in case. Okay, and I gotta go out. So else. Okay, button is release. 
So GPIO. Dot out put a parentheses buzz buzzer pin comma GPIO low close parentheses. All right. GPIO output buzzer pin GPIO low and we need print open parentheses buzzer turned off. I'm not sure why the chevrons are there, but maybe that's just to put on screen. We'll play around with that and see. All right, and I think this is the, just to do clean up. DEF, STROY. And I'm not sure if these are actually necessary. We will find out. GPIO. I'm a big one on even if it's like our cooking recipe. Let's do the recipe first. And then the next time we can always change it if we want to. I think we learned last time those are double. Whoops, I need the space. Name. Equal equal. Underscore, underscore, space, I believe. Space. Name. Underscore, underscore. Print. program is which I like that but again I have to look into it further in the future I'm not sure that these are really necessary oh, I need a colon in there oh, let me go ahead and save this and we're gonna call it doorbell Starting set up. Open parentheses, close parentheses, try, open parentheses, loop. Let me drag this down here. I'm gonna have to drag it back later because when we hit we actually run it. That's where it actually will show that the code's running. Loop, open parentheses, close parentheses. And we should go back out. In our basic projects, we hold down Control C, which does a, a keyboard interrupt and it stops the program, which it shows it right there. And I think this means. If I do the keyboard interrupt, it's going to quote unquote destroy, destroy and run the destroy program, which is going to clean up. All right, let's look through our code and then I'll hook our final uh, plugs up and let's see if we get a buzz. Will it be loud? We don't know yet, do we? All right, so input RBI GPIO0 as, let me hit save too, by the way, buzz. Pin equals 11, button pin equals 12, 
df setup gpio period setup opentrances forward like i said that's doing the numbering gpio so in the future i would actually look and see if i if that was necessary or if i could just set it up the normal way i could do with the led gpio setup GPIO setup, buzz pin, GPIO out, GPIO setup, buzz button pin, GPIO, oh, that needs a period, doesn't it? Period. GPIO in. Pull up down equals GPPUD in. Let's see, def while true. If GPIO pin, if GPIO pin input, button pin equals low. If it's press, GPIO output, buzzer pin, GPIO high, print buzzer turned on, else. GPIO, and by the way, you, you, the, the hashtags, the, if, you, if you do want to write comments on there like that shows, you can do that because it, any of the hashtags, it doesn't run code. So that's just for comments. Okay, so else GPIO output, buzzer pin, GPIO low, let's see, print, Buzzer turned off. Def destroy. Let's see. GPIO cleanup. And see if and I did put a space there. Name equals main. Parent. Program is starting. Setup. Try. Loop. Accept keyboard. Interrupt. Destroy. Okay. So let's go back to our handout. Let's go back to our schematic and let's hook our final cords up and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so we need this one. This is going to go to the five volt that's up here. And this one's going to go to, let's see, our three volts. Three volts are going to be going to where is it? Oh, same row as the resistor. Oops, need to stick up so much. There we go. Okay, so let's run our code and see if our button press makes a noise. Okay, and. If it doesn't, we'll try again. Alright. Why is it saying <laughs> why is it continuously saying buzzer turned off? Okay. Let's see, GPIO low, buzzer turned off. Is that just what it, it's going to do in a loop? Okay, let me make sure that these are on the same row. I don't, oh, they're not. Are they? Yeah, they are. Okay. Oh, sorry didn't have the camera on hold on there we go yay we're back okay and it, I turned it sideways there for a second okay so
Now let's run our code. And it looks like we are having a problem, so we're going to have to go back and recheck everything. Let's go back and let's check our wires. I'm not sure why it's screaming that part. Let's see. Anything we've missed here? Be an import or be IG. Oh, let's look at the output one. Def loop while true is GPIO input button pin equals GPIO low GPIO output fuzz pin GPIO high it's a comma right there yeah print buzzer turned on else GPIO output buzzer GPIO low print buzzer turned off so I guess it's just going to continue to say buzzer turned off. Let's see, else. Why would it keep doing it? Why wouldn't it do it? just do it once? Okay, destroy. Let's see, GPIO cleanup. This isn't necessary for us, I believe. I have to look more into that. Starting program. Okay, so let's do run. It will just continuously say, okay, where's the top say? All right, hold on. What does it say at the top? Okay. Let's see. Program is started, doorbell. Warning, this channel is already in use. Continue anyway. Use GPIO set warning false to disable warning. GPIO setup buzzer. GPIO output. Let's see. GPIO setup. Set up buzz pin. That's GPIO output. Let me make sure that's right. GPIO setup. Buzzer pin comma GPIO output yeah all right so let's go back and let's check our cords all right first our power one here's our positive and that's blue you see this is a helpful of us using the same um, you know colors and everything let's see we have our going to five. We have GPIO eighteen. All right, cool. Yeah, eighteen is going to the resistor. Resistor is on the same row as the button. So the button's on the same row as this resistor. See, and then this resistor. Okay, well, let's just follow the path, I guess, of uh, some of this. Okay, so goes into the button. Yeah, that would have to be that way because if I turn it the other way, then. Huh. Does that have to go one way? Okay, so let's look back here. Okay, that's GPIO 17 is going to this resistor. Okay, which goes in the middle. 
same on the same row. Put one into the middle. Okay, this one, the last one goes to the rail. Okay, this goes to this button. The ground, this side of the button. Hmm. Okay, and then that grounded goes to, oh, it's in the rail. And then that ground, I want to make sure it's in the right one, ground goes to our rail. Okay, so that grounds that. And that grounds that. Now our fuzzer says positive. That's on the same rail. This is one of those where with LED I usually would hook it up and just give it power to light up. And this looks like it's going to be stubborn. And I can't just test it, so there could be a possibility that well, maybe this has to be turned a different way. And because it's my first time using one of those, let's scroll back up here to the top. So we're using this one here, and it looks like that's the flat side, isn't it? So it's kind of showing that that's the flat side because we're using the NPN resistor. NPN resistor and it kind of shows the flat side as well. So that looks like it's showing the flat side so that should be right. There's the positive going that way and Let's keep scrolling here. Let's see below it. Nope, it just goes to the next project. Okay, so we triple check our code here. All right, import rp uh, gp dot gpio zero as gpio buzzer pins 11, buzzer pin 12, make sure I have this set up properly, it's in there, this ribbon only goes in one, this side only goes in one way. Hmm. Let's see, set mode GPIO board. Yeah, set mode setup. I'm not getting an error message. GPIO setup, button pin, GPIO in, pull up down, pull up down equals GPIO, pull up close parentheses. Def loop while true is GPIO input button button pin equals equals GPIO low GPIO output open parentheses buzzer pin comma GPIO high print buzzer turned on else it has a space. Let's see, GPIO output, buzzer pin, comma, GPIO low. Let's see, print, open parentheses, buzzer turned off, def destroy, GPIO pin up, clean up, if name, main print program is starting 
setup, try, loop, accept, keyboard, interrupt, destroy. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Fimble with everything. Hmm. PIO eighteen five be positive. I guess that's what it says. They were both brand new. And will and rail grounded. Buttons turned the wrong way. Okay, I'm actually going to try that. And I do know that a button. Okay. In class, I've had it where it maybe may not be this same type of button because I'm still new to a lot of this. But usually in class we do that and we tag the same side. Maybe this is a different kind of button and I have it turned the wrong way. Maybe not, I can't even get that to go. I can't even get that to go across. Okay, maybe not. Those are the buttons that came with this pro this little project kit. Will we will try a different button? Maybe that one's not going down in there enough. But looks little example shows this little small button. Let me check that. No. like a little micro button but if I don't do it that way it won't cross the what I call the river push button switch one okay and it shows it that way on the 
same rep the same row same row all right let's turn it on and try that one back to our project Let's see active buzzer okay it showed the plus on one side and our instructions shows the plus side on there okay so maybe I do need to take No, it shows the plus sign. There it is, clear as day. Clear as day. All right. Clearly the plus side, this is the active one. Make sure these are in the right row. Yep, on the right row. I sound like Scooby Doo. Ruh, 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 ruh. Well, let's see. Is this hook right? Yep. That's right. Well, well, well. Oops. We don't like that because it's uncovered. We'll put a different one there. code all right if I do control C let's see one time warning y8 TPIO buzz out TPIO out buzzer pin buzzer pin comma TPIO setup this channel is already muted continuing anyway new TPIO set warnings false to disable warnings I had that, that pop up last time but then it's still the project still worked It is a comma. Hmm. Buzzer pin TPI out. Print buzzer turned on. Print buzzer turned on. It sure is showing the buzzer turned off. Wild tree TPIO output. I missed a letter, didn't I? Missed a letter. Okay. Maybe. Didn't have the word output. Yes! <laughs> At the last minute of class, I get it working. Here we go. Wow, that's loud. Well, there's still something wrong with the code. 
because even though it's beeping, the screen does not say on. So had to figure that one out. But always have to go back to check in your code. See, it's still saying off, turn off, off, off. And if I do the control C and I scroll back up, it's going to look like a bunch of offs. I don't see one on. Yeah, so there's still something that is not working properly. And it's probably my code in some way. But anyway, last minute, got it working now, didn't I? <laughs> told it to stop so it shouldn't work anymore no okay well thank you for joining me <laughs> we did get it to work not exactly the way it's, it's supposed to I think that is loud I'm kind of reminded of a microwave or something like that making that sound okay well That was a pretty fun project. Okay, so thank you for joining me this afternoon. Right at the last minute, we got our, our buzz to work, didn't we? Beep, 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 beep. So let's go ahead and just little, do a little bit of a reminder of our other classes that we have coming up this week so come join me tomorrow 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 is the seventh tomorrow at 11 o'clock we're going to be doing the google suite and then at 2 30 we're going to be doing email 101 personal and business basics okay and then on the 8th we're going to be doing google school at 11 o'clock and we'll be doing let's build a website with wordpress at 2 30. so come join me for that and like I said, lots of new classes. And usually I put a little new next to the, sign, the, the list there. Maybe I need to do that. Lots of new classes, lots of Halloween classes. So please let friends or family know. Share our videos. Let friends or family know that the library, we are doing stuff. And it's available to anybody too. Because we're doing it here on YouTube. Just a little side note. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with the questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like I said, we're trying to get 100 uh, subscribers to our YouTube channel and then we can get our own unique address on YouTube. Or you can search for our, our YouTube channel uh, going to gchrl.org. Okay, well, thank you for enjoy um, um, and <laughs> thank you for joining me this afternoon. If I can actually talk, and I'll look forward to see you in the morning or in a future class. Thank you so much for coming, and have a great day. It's sunny. It's October. Enjoy the weather, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.